The latest MuOS update, Big Banana, has been released. Although this is considered a minor update, which means no reflash is required if you're currently running the banana version, it brings some large features that people have been waiting on for a while, like content search and a kiosk mode. I'll cover those and some other prominent added features. So let's just get on with it. Like the previous banana update, Big Banana supports a new device, the RG Cube XX. I don't own this device, as I can't afford to buy a new Ambernick device every two weeks, but if you have one, let me know your experiences with it, especially running MuOS. Some good news for people with large libraries, content search has been added. To get to it, open Explore Content, then press Select, which will take you directly to the search menu. First, select Look Up and enter your search term here. You can enter any part of the game's title. Then you can select Search Local or Search Global. Search Global will search both SD cards for anything related to that term. Search Local will search the current directory and all child directories where you started the search. So because we started this search in the main list of systems, it will search the whole default SD card. But if we go into another directory and press select, there is an extra step here. We must choose search content to get to the search screen. But now if we choose search locally, we will see that it only shows the content found in this directory and lower. While if we select search global, it will show everything on both SD cards again. I can appreciate this feature's convenience, even though I'm one of the people who dislike having an enormous library. I've been looking forward to a kiosk mode, and I was pleasantly surprised to find it included in this update. This allows you to lock down areas of MuOS so settings can't be changed and things can't get messed up by accident. This is great for setting up a device for someone else, especially kids. The MuOS website has a kiosk info page showing all the options and an example template that you can download. I'll include a link directly to the kiosk page in the description. If you want to download the template, click the example link and click the download button on this page. You must rename the file and delete the word example that shows up at the end. Then you can edit the file and change any of the zeros to the right of the feature that you want disabled to the number one. Once you have done that, save the file and place it in the MuOS folder on SD card one. When you power on the device, you should notice that the things you have disabled are missing or locked when you try to launch them. One thing I hope for in the future is to have the ability to hide the main setting options that have been disabled to make things even more straightforward for the kiosk user. You can temporarily disable the kiosk mode if you need to change a lockdown setting or if you need to make changes to the kiosk INI file. First, highlight the reboot option on the main screen hold down L1, R2, and press the Y button. This disables kiosk mode, and you can then make your changes to the settings that were locked down, or if you need to make changes to the INI file, it will now be accessible in the MuOS folder on the SD card. If you don't need to make changes to the INI file, you can highlight the reboot option again, press the hotkey to reapply the kiosk mode without needing to reboot. Even if you don't toggle it back on, the kiosk mode will be re-enabled on the next boot up. If you want to permanently disable the kiosk mode, highlight the reboot option on the main menu, hold down L1, R2, and press X. This will disable the kiosk mode completely and remove any trace of the kiosk INI file. If you want to enable it again, you will need to add another kiosk INI file to the MoS folder on SD card one. Sega Saturn support is now available with the Yaba Sanchiro emulator I was never big into Saturn when I was younger, so I'm not a great judge on what performance should generally be, but the few games I tested felt like they ran great using the external emulator. Please let me know what your experiences are with it. For the external emulator, you can press the select button to enter the main menu while playing a game, and this takes you to where you can access settings, save states, and quit the emulator. The default external drastic emulator has been updated, this is made by Turnguji, who was responsible for the Drastic Steward version that we were using. The new version brings better performance, so a big thanks to him 
for the work that he does on these updates. If you encounter any hotkey issues with Drastic after the update, go to Applications, Task Toolkit, and select Restore Drastic Configuration. With this update, you can now edit the Drastic hotkeys yourself. You can do this by going to the Drastic menu, select Configure Controls, and here you will see a list of the basic keybinds. If you want to change the hotkey combinations, go down to Extra Controls. Once here, look for the Assign Hotkey option. This is going to be the button that you hold down to enable the hotkey combinations. For me, it's set to the Function button. However, some people may like to set this to Select. If you then go down some more, you will see all the options that have the word HOT next to them. These are all the hotkeys for when the hotkey button that you just sent a moment ago is being held down. Once you make your changes, make sure to select Save and Exit. The Storage Preferences options that were added in Banana are no longer located deep in the settings and have been moved to the Storage option within the General Configurations menu. We can now also migrate things to the second SD card right from this menu, which is very convenient. If you are setting up a dual SD card for the first time and need to migrate everything, you can still use the Migrate to SD2 tool located in Applications, Task Toolkit. An audio overdrive option has been added, which is an audio boost in case you have high impedance headphones that are too quiet even at max volume. You can find this setting in Configuration, General Settings, Advanced. External controller support for the MuOS main menu is now a thing. Not all controllers will work, but they have added many profiles for the most commonly used controllers. Since Bluetooth is not ready yet, you must connect the controller to the device with a cord, and if you have not done so, you will also have to set your controller in RetroArch which is outside the scope of this video. But since I mentioned Bluetooth, I want to give a quick update as there is good news. The foundation for Bluetooth is being worked on, and I think the back end is even finished. The front end will still need to be created, but if everything goes well, I could see it being ready for the next major update. MuOS now supports watching IPTV streams using .m3u8 files. For this demonstration, I added my own IPTV channels, which I created using Ursats TV. These channels run on my own server using content that I purchased and upload for personal use only. You can get links to IPTV streams from paid IPTV providers, or you can find some free links to public channels from places like the GitHub project IPTV-org. But I would be careful when looking for free or cheap IPTV services that sound too good to be true, so just do your research before you get involved. To set this up, create a text file with the file extension .m3u8. The contents of that file would be the .m3u8 link to the stream and nothing else. Then you create a folder named whatever you want in your ROMs folder and place the .m3u8 file here. When you go to launch the file on your device, you will select Media Player, then Live TV. If you are running a single SD card, ensure you are backing things up, like your save games or settings, even if you're going to do the quick update that does not require a flash. The backup tools on the device in the Applications Task Toolkit make this easy. You just run each of these backup tasks and then copy all the files that they create from the backup folder on the SD card to your computer. This does not copy over ports and ROMs folders, so move those over if you don't have a backup of them already. To download the update file, go to the muos.dev website, click the Download Latest Here button, then under where it says Download Update Only, choose Download from Go file, then select the Download button for the update.zip file. Once done downloading, do not unzip it, just put the zip file in the archive folder on your SD card, and then run the update from the archive manager located in the Applications menu. Once your device restarts, you are done.
If you are coming from a version older than Banana, like the Bean versions, or you have never used MuOS before, you must flash your SD card with the new full image of Big Banana. That can be found using the Go File link under Download Full Image. Make sure you're grabbing the correct one for your device. You will then also want to use the backup tools that I showed earlier, but I will not go through the whole process in this video as I covered it many times, and there are a lot of other good videos showing you the MuOS installation. All right, that wraps up everything I wanted to cover with the Big Banana update. As with each of these, I can't go over everything. So if you're curious, you can check out the full notes on the MoOS website. Again, I want to thank all of the devs and contributors who put time and effort into making this a great firmware. If you want to support the project, you can check out the Ko-fi link in the description. You can make a one-time donation, and there are also memberships that grant access to unreleased test builds. If you encounter any bugs or issues, you can ask me in the comments or Ask the fantastic community over in the MuOS Discord. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe for more content from FireX Techs, and as always, thank you for watching.